preamble is referred to as the heart of the constitution. Why? I'll tell you why. It describes the objectives of our constitution. Also, the preamble signifies the basic ideology of independent India. It lists noble ideas that elected governments and citizens of India must embrace. The Constitution of India defined the way our country should be. Our nation's nature and attitude. The makers of our Constitution wanted India to be an inclusive, independent and equal state. All that has been mentioned in the preamble. When you go through the preamble, the first words that you come across are We the people of India. It means that the real authority lies with the people. The constitution derives its power from each and every individual in the country. The people have given the elected members of the constituent assembly the power to frame our constitution. Once we gained independence, we never wanted to go back to that life of struggle and subjugation. We wanted to be free and remain that way. So our constitution makers decided that from here on, we wouldn't be under the grip of any external power. We wouldn't let someone else interfere in our country's affairs. So the preamble declares that we would be a sovereign state. Sovereign state is one which operates without any forceful influence of foreign powers. In 1976, the terms socialist and secular were included in the preamble. The term socialist refers to the idea of redistribution of wealth in a country. A socialist government taxes people who have more money and distributes it to those who have less money. Now, let us talk about the term secular. According to the constitution, the government can't force citizens to follow a particular religion. People are free to profess, practice and spread any religion that they wish to. Also, it makes sure that no one is discriminated against based on their religious beliefs. In other words, the government is not supposed to provide special treatment to people based on their religion. Some of the terms used in the preamble describe the nature of our country's government. These terms are democratic and republic. A democratic state is the one where the people of the country choose and elect their leaders. People do this by casting votes. Anyone over the age of 18, be it a man or a woman, rich or poor, irrespective of their caste or creed, is allowed to cast their vote to elect the leader that they want. This is called the Universal Adult Franchise. India has established itself to be the biggest functioning democracy in the world. India is also a republic. This refers to the fact that the head of the state, the president, is elected. He or she is elected for a period of five years. This position isn't hereditary. The president can't pass on this position to his or her children when the term ends. The same rule applies to MLAs, MPs, chief ministers, prime ministers and ministers. All of them have to win elections to occupy these positions. Let us now look into the main objectives of our constitution and understand them in detail. Well, there are four main objectives. They are liberty, equality, justice and fraternity. Well, 
Liberty is the state of being free within the society from the oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's thought, expression, faith, worship and belief. Every individual has the right to think individually and express his or her thoughts to others. In addition to that, every citizen has the right to follow any faith and worship any god that he or she wishes. In simpler terms, it is the ability to do as one pleases. Of course, liberty is not unlimited. Your liberty must not affect others in a bad way and you must not be flouting laws of the country. Equality is a situation where citizens receive equal treatment from the government. In other words, every citizen must get similar rights, opportunities and status. Every citizen must have opportunities to achieve their dreams. All citizens must be treated well by the government. That covers equality of status. And lastly, all citizens must get similar rights. All citizens must be treated in a similar way when they are tried by the courts. Of course, there are many exceptions to the principle of equality. These exceptions are essential to solve certain problems. But eventually, the constitution aims to achieve equality of opportunity, status and rights for all Indians. What does it mean when you say that justice is being done in a country? It's a complicated question. The constitution promises social, economic and political justice to all its citizens. It aims to deliver social justice by eliminating privileges to certain individuals of society. It also tries to eliminate discrimination on grounds of caste, creed and colour. Economic justice refers to a situation where everyone gets a chance to earn a decent livelihood. The constitution aims to achieve political justice as well. Now, what does political justice mean? It is a situation where ordinary citizens are allowed to vote and contest in elections. Fraternity means a sense of brotherhood among individuals. The Constitution of India aims to promote fraternity among all citizens. The Constitution aims to protect the dignity of all individuals. It hopes that brotherhood among citizens could help enhance the integrity of the nation and the feeling of unity among citizens. If you like this video and want to watch many many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.